All right, so we get to a really important chapter here in personal finance. We're going to talk about savings. So this is called, like the curriculum that originally used is called how to stash cash, but really it's just the principles of saving. Um, so um, just saving is something that everybody should do, right? You don't spend your entire income. We just talked about budgeting and we set up, uh, you know, even kind of the limits of what savings should look like, setting aside money uh, for that. And we'll talk about this more in class, but part of the reason that saving, uh, we'll watch this video together, part of the reason that saving works in your favor so much is because something called compound interest. There's actually two different types of interest. In seventh grade math, you learn to calculate simple interest, uh, which is calculated by the principal amount that you invest. So if I go to the bank and say, I want to put in $400 in my savings account, that $400 is the principal amount. The interest rate is affected kind of basic, basically by the economy, how it's doing. Those inter interest rates, they fluctuate a lot. Um, you can see here it's saying it's 5%. We'll talk about what those percents usually often are here in a moment. Um, and then the last part of this is time. So the equation you learn in seventh grade math is I equals PRT, where the interest equals the percent times the rate as a decimal. So in this case, 5% would be 0 0.05. And then the time. So the longer you leave your money in, the more it's going to make for you. But the way that interest really works is that the interest compounds. And you can kind of see this here, that if I would put in $2,000 into uh, an account and it produced a hundred dollars in interest just by letting your money sit and the bank rewards you just because they need money to do other things with. So by they reward you for giving your money to them so that they can save it. I know we probably think that when we invest money in our savings account, that it probably gets put in the safe. But that's not really true. The bank doesn't keep all that money on hand. Um, your money's still safe there. You can go back and you can retrieve it. Uh, sometimes all at once, sometimes it requires like a 24 hour, 48 hour period of time before they can have your funds available to you. But the bank rewards you for that. Uh, next chapter with spending, we'll talk about uh, you know the penalty for when interest works against you. So assume that at the end of year one, you now have $2,100, right? That's your new total because you just made $100 on um, saving money. Well, in year two now, your interest is going to be compounded because now you're not earning interest on $2,000 anymore. You're earning interest on $2,100. And so what's going to happen is that the amount of interest is going to grow um, exponentially is how we would say that. Um, meaning that it's not just going to grow by $100 every single time because you start making interest on your interest. So in year two, we're not just earning money on $2,000 anymore, we're earning it on $2,100. And that's the really the reason that, you know, thousands of dollars can turn into ten thousands of dollars because that compound interest, and it's happening, um, this is compounded annually, but I think often interest is compounded even more rapidly than that, compounded daily. Um, and so the interest you earn just in one day is then compounded uh, for the next day and the day after. So if you left your money in for 365 days, it's compounded 365 days. Um, so we don't have to calculate those because that's a more of a finance uh, and fairly difficult thing. You can see the formula here. This is not something that you use in uh, our math classes. So we're not going to kind of mess with that. Just know that your money makes a lot um, because of compound interest. I found this online. Um, so these are some of the interest rates for uh, some online banks, which is a kind of a newer thing. You know, we're kind of used to, you know, a bank is a place you go to put your money, but there are now banks that you can um, get a savings account through that reward you um, still with interest. So you can see here that 0 0.57, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So they do have minimum balances. So this one has, you have to keep $100 in here. This one, you don't have to keep any money in. Um, Often the minimum balance is at least like $20 at most banks, I think, um, that you have to have in a savings account. And then you can see after one year, you earned like $142, $125, which in the grand scheme of saving is not a lot. Uh, and then I had, yeah, I think that was the only 
There was another one I was going to show you in, I think, Chase Bank. That's where I bank. And theirs is even worse. So 0.5% may not seem like very much, but if you see what I'm looking at here, 0.01. And this is what I receive in my savings account at Chase. Now, there's a couple of other things you can do, um, places you can put your money to save, which is going to make more. Um, and we'll talk about some of those options here in a moment. But traditionally, savings accounts, although a good place, like I have a savings account, most of my money that I need readily available is in my savings account. Um, you know, I do have some of my checking account, but like my money for emergencies, my money that's set aside, I keep about three to six months of expenses in my savings account. Um, you can put your money in other places. You know, I have retirement and those are hopefully going to produce higher interest rates than 0 0.01 because, you know, you start thinking about that. I mean, we can even show, if I brought up my calculator here, the way I don't do any wrong calculations. So let's say like a thousand bucks is quite a bit of money, right? So let's say I had a thousand dollars and then uh, the interest rate is that uh, 0 0.01. And if I left my money in then for one year, I end up making $10. Like that's not a lot, right? Like, so it might seem to you like, ooh, saving, why would I save? Well, it's not necessarily that saving is bad, just only putting your money in a savings account. At first, starting out for you guys, junior high, high school, savings accounts, fine. But when you start wanting to save for retirement or save for big purchases, going after other types of saving uh, can be really, really helpful. So uh, next thing we're gonna look at is one of my favorite things to show students, but it can be a little bit misleading. I'm gonna move uh, this out of the way so you can see this a little bit better. Um, I'll talk about what this link is to here in just a second. Um, so this is a, a chart that I've used in the past, and it analyzes two different kind of fictitious people. Um, this guy here is named Ben, and he saves from the age of 19 to 26, uh, and he saves $2,000 a year. And that's pretty impressive because, you know, Ben, maybe he's in college, maybe he's just straight out of high school. Saving $2,000 a year is not an easy thing to do. So he manages, I think that's $14,000 over the period of that seven years, right? Seven years, $2,000 a year, $14,000. He doesn't touch that money again. And you can see these are all the years of his life. And it's hard to really read down here because my screen's kind of cutting it off. But at the age of 64, it's really kind of hard to see that. But there is over $2 million in his account. Notice that he didn't put anything in all these years. But if you notice the amount continues to grow, go up. So like in, when he's 27, it jumps from $27,000 to $30,000. And then, and you know, if you jump down again, 46 to 47, now it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. He's up to 265, 297. So his money is making money by just letting it sit. Now, one of the things that's a little bit misleading here is that up here at the top, we're seeing that this is earning 12% interest. Well, that's a far cry better than 0.01% interest because this is not a savings account. It is probably something like a mutual fund. And it's also a mutual fund that's doing really, really well. Um, I have some of my investments in mutual funds. Um, I'm not sure I can tell you what the percent I've been able to achieve on them. Some of them have been probably way better than 0.01, but not all of them have been that high. So I, it, you can't always say, well, if I just save $2,000 between 19 and 26, then I'm going to be a, a multimillionaire by the age of 64. Maybe, um, you know, you can't predict the future. Maybe that money is going to have to go towards other things. You know, if I had at the age, I'm 37 right now, if I had $95,000 sitting in an account, that's a hard thing to just kind of go, oh, I'll just let it set longer. Well, if I pulled that money out and I used it, that would feel kind of nice. You know, I could do a lot with $95,000. So the other part of this uh, chart is his brother, Arthur. And Arthur, I think, is a more typical person. Arthur does not save from the age of 19 to 26, right? He's young. He wants to do other things with his money. Maybe he doesn't have a really good paying job. Um, and so he wants to spend his money on fun things and not saving. And so he doesn't. And that's pretty typical, I think, of a lot of people not saving money whenever they're younger like that, especially like college age. It's hard to save. I didn't save really when I was in college, except to pay for my college bills. Um, so then at the age of 27, you know, he gets a job and he puts in $2,000. And I think if we total these up, it's something like $76,000 he puts in from the age of 27 to 64. 
and it's hard to read down here, but that when we said it was $2 million for Ben, Arthur only has $1,366,000. Uh, now, only, right? Like a million dollars is still amazing. That's great. But he's beat. He was beat by his brother that even put in less money, but it's because he started earlier. And that's the thing about saving is that you got to start early. Uh, you can't wait until you're ready to retire and then you, you know, put a big portion of your savings account or your checking account, whatever, money aside. It's got to start now. So like I'm not close to retirement, but I'm saving for retirement right now. My kids, I have a college savings account for them. They are not even close to going to college. They're six and eight years old, but I'm saving for that because I want my money to grow and I want my money to work and earn interest for me. Uh, this article right here is just basically explains why this isn't a great graph. It really kind of criticizes the 12% growth uh, that is experiencing here, but any growth is better than nothing, right? If like your grade raises 1%, you're like, eh, 1%. But still, 1% is better than 0%. And I think that if you just leave your money just sit at home, it doesn't grow. So at least putting it in a savings account, earning that 0.01% interest, it's not great, but it's better. And your money is, you know, it's make it's free money in a sense. Like, right? You're just letting it sit. Um, um, there are apps that can help you calculate how much you would make if you put in the time, if you put in how much you're going to invest and you put in the interest rate, it can help you kind of figure those out. I'm not going to go to that site right now. So one of the things that makes these difference is that like a typical, there's some types of savings accounts. So you have like a traditional, traditional savings account. You also have these things called certificates of deposit. Sometimes they're called CDs. And really the only difference is that it's like a, it's a savings account for a certain length of time. So typically like 36 months would be like a typical CD. That's three years. So you have to give up your money for three years, however much you choose to put in, $1,000, $2,000, $10,000. And then that money grows and it will grow at a higher interest rate. Kind of how the banks work is that the further uh, removed you are from your money, the less access you have to that, the higher interest you're going to get. So a checking account, your money is just right there, right? You're always spending it connected to your debit card or whatever. Um, it doesn't produce interest. Almost every checking account does not produce interest. Savings accounts usually produce pretty low interest because I can move that money around pretty easily and get it somewhere else. But when my money is now tied up for a number of months, uh, then I get rewarded with higher interest. So, and then a money market's kind of the same way. I don't know too much about money markets. I've never used those, but I have used the first two there. Uh, investments are more long-term, IRAs, mutual funds, uh, 401ks and stocks. Um, one of the big things we have to talk about here is, well, if these down here always produce higher or usually always produce higher interest, why would you ever choose these? Well, your money is very safe here. And it talks about that over here. There is no risk. Like you can't really put your money in a savings account and then lose your money. Um, it never, even the economy is doing bad and interest rates are low. You still, your money is guaranteed. It's actually uh, protected by the federal government. Um, so it will not lose money. But in stocks, you can lose money. If a company goes under and doesn't do well, you lose that money. So it is a risk. So you are rewarded with higher interest because you're taking the risk and in investing. Um, later on, when we get to next semester, we'll do a little bit with entrepreneurship and we'll watch an episode of Shark Tank. Uh, and that's really kind of how that show works. Like they, those investors have to decide, is this worth my money? Am I willing to put my money into this because it's risky? Um, the wonderful thing about like a mutual fund and an IRA is that I pay a company to invest for me. So I don't have to understand all these different things out there. Uh, there's something on one of these slides that talk about uh, yeah, mutual funds that says diversified. So that means like not having all of your eggs in one basket. Um, and what I mean by that is like, you might have, um, your mutual fund might be talk, uh, might be made up of some things that are supposed to grow at a higher percent some things that are growing more steadily, but are more secure. And so because all of your money is not wrapped up in some risky venture that may not be successful, um, it makes a more stable um, amount of money that you'll make. So this just this kind of compares investments uh, of mutual funds and stocks. Uh, in a stock, you actually own part of a company. And actually just last um, 
semester, I had a guest speaker uh, via Zoom uh, through e-learning, and he, this is what he does. Like he is an investment kind of banker guy through German American Bank, and what he told us is that um, VRBO, which is like the vacation by owner thing, just went public, which means that people could then buy shares of the stock to own part of the company. And as the company does well, guess what happens? All of its investors make money. So if you can put $10,000 into VRBO and then the company's stock prices grow, then all of those shares that you own, you know, if you paid $100 per share and then it goes up to $150 per share, you've made $50 on every share that you've owned. And if you own, you know, 10,000 shares or something like that, you're making a lot of money. So um, mutual funds and stocks are both options. And I know that a lot of this is just probably like, well, this is a lot. I don't need to know all this stuff right now. But again, knowing that you should invest your money. Uh, I know of one eighth grader in this building that like already has, pl does the stock market, he invests. Um, and I think again, like there's that, uh, it's kind of like why people play the lottery, right? Like playing the lottery is like, well, maybe I'll, I'll get it, I'll hit it big and I'll make money. But I would say the difference is, is that usually saving and investing are going to be much more likely to produce at least some money than winning the lottery, right? Like I've bought lottery tickets and I've hardly ever won a thing. But if I put my money in a savings account or in stocks, there is a chance I might lose some, but even I've lost money in some of the stocks that I have, uh, some of the mutual funds, but they have always rebounded and I've made that money back up. Um, so it has worked in my favor. Um, so investing your money is a, is a really, really good thing to keep in mind. Um, this is just something that came from our curriculum. So it's just talking about, um, you know, the company is expected to increase profits over the next three to five years. So we would expect, you know, the share price of it's $73, we would expect that to go up. So um, when a company becomes public like that, their shares are usually based on a certain level and then they can go up or down based on how the company is doing. Um, you know, you can think about a company like Walt Disney, you know, could, could anybody have imagined a long time ago when Disney first put out their first film that they would be as big as they are today owning like, um, you know, they have the rights to Star Wars and Marvel and um, they have all those amusement parks that bring in um, hundreds of thousands, millions of people per year. They've got toy lines. I mean, there is a lot of money wrapped up in Disney. Um, so if you could have got in on that whenever the stocks were cheaper and then sold the stocks as the company does better you make a lot of money. Uh, this is often what stocks look like. And it shows kind of like the tracking of like, so these are shares. And so on Monday, the share, you know, uh, well, some of these are kind of hard to read, but so we can see this share went down. Um, and then some of them went up. So you can just track it from day to day. Um, when stocks go up, you make money. When they go down, you lose money. Um, So you can read this. You can decide where you want to invest your money yourself. Many people play the stock market and invest based on what they see happening in the market. Um, and then as I said, like what I do is I leave the investments to a company. They take a little cut of that, but um, places like American Fidelity, AIG, there's a lot of companies out there that this is what they kind of specialize in doing. So um, kind of the general conclusion is saving is something that everybody should do, but you shouldn't just be content as you get older to only save, which is a savings account. You need to put money into mutual funds. Uh, retire. If you ever hear someone talk about retirement accounts, they're not talking about they just put their money in a savings account. They work, set up something like I have one through my employer here at the school uh, where I'm saving for retirement. So um, not that you just want to have only money left whenever you're you know old, <laughs> but you uh, got to plan for those things now. Um, and you know, I want my retirement to be enjoyable. I want to go do fun things. I want to take vacations and, and, and do fun stuff. I don't want to be stuck at home because I don't have any money. Um, so finding a ways to invest, uh, and just keeping in mind that interest really works in your favor. We'll do some more examination of that in class. So, uh, that'll wrap it up for this time. Thanks for watching.